Hi guys, it's Ben here. Welcome back to another video. The season is here. It is Jurgen Klopp's third full season in charge of Liverpool. It's my second season uh, on YouTube, so let's hope it's a successful one. It was so nearly a successful one last year with the Champions League final. This year, most people are tipping us to be City's biggest title challenges. I mean, most bookmakers have got us 4-1, to one, which is probably the shortest odds we've been at the start of the season for a long time. We're much shorter than United, Chelsea, Arsenal, Spurs. Uh, the transfer window has shut a couple of hours ago. We haven't signed anyone on deadline day, as expected. Uh, last year, we were really disappointed that we didn't sign Van Dijk and Keita, or maybe not Keita, but Lamar, I guess, was, was the one. Uh, we signed Oxley Chamberlain on that day. I think people were hopeful today that something might get revived with Nabil Fakir. It's something that everyone's been going on about ever since the deal fell through in June. I thought for a while we might get him, but do you, you know what? Over the past couple of weeks, even since maybe the week after the World Cup, it's kind of been obvious that it isn't going to happen. And I think when you take it, um, when you look at it holistically, when you look at the context of where we were last season compared to where we are now with our goalkeeping situation, with our defence situation, with Van Dijk, uh, with Fabinho and Keita both being in, with Shakiri being an extra option off the bench, with Sturridge being back, um, looking like his old self, with Alana being back fit. Yes, we've lost Oxley Chamberlain, but we haven't lost, haven't been sold any of our best players this summer, which is a very positive thing and not to be understated. Um, and I, I, I can see exactly why we're second favourites. I can see exactly exactly why people do think this is the year we do mount that title challenge. I think most pundits um, are picking City to win it, understandably so. I think if you go with your uh, head over your heart, you'd probably say the same thing, but there's a very good case to be made. And a few pundits, um, if you look at the BBC uh, pundit predicting, um, a few of them, the only ones that haven't got City to win it have got Liverpool to win it. So it's a very, very positive uh, you know, behaviour, mindset going into the season. Pre-season was very good, scoring lots of goals, excited by Shakiri, excited by Sturridge. Um, and we go into this game against West Ham United at home. It's a nice fixture. It's not the ideal fixture because they're not like a newly promoted side. They have got a bit of pedigree, especially with these new signings that they've brought in. Um, but I think we have every right to be Pretty pleased that this is the fixture that we are going to kick off with. And I am going to preview this game right now. Before I do so, I want to tell you about someone that has sponsored me. And I'm very thankful for this because having these kind of sponsors allows me to do things that I want to do. It allows me to go to away games. Like I can actually afford it. And it allows me to do things like giveaways, which I'm doing on my Instagram right now. So follow me at Ben Might Say to check that out. It's a giveaway of any Liverpool shirt you want. You need to be following me on Instagram to find out about that. But my sponsor for this video is 888 Sports. And they uh, sponsor me throughout the World Cup or during the World Cup I did a video for them and they've still got this offer which they told me about uh, before which is the bet 10 get 30 deal which you know hopefully some of you took um, advantage of during the World Cup um, and if you didn't then please do so now if you're 18 plus and you already like gambling then you know I would encourage you to do so with 888 as I showed you before or when I showed you this app during the World Cup um, all the sports that you want are on there obviously football is one we're mostly interested in um, and if you place a £10 bet on any sports market you will get £30 in free bets if you are a new customer um, so as I said if you're 18 plus and you do like a gamble then and if you haven't already uh, downloaded 888 Sport then the links are in my description um, for the iOS and the Android version. Um, so let's go to the Premier League. Let's look at the odds for the Liverpool game, shall we? I always talk about the odds uh, because, you know, I am admittedly a betting man, um, hence why people like 888 uh, want to work with me. So, yeah, Liverpool. Now, what an odd that I saw earlier, goal scorer, uh, Mohamed Salah scored the first goal at 41 to 20. Seems pretty generous. Um, that, that's better than 2 to 1 on Mohamed Salah to score the first goal. I mean, he scored all the time as Mohamed Salah is at Anfield. Um, so yeah, I like that. And if you know, if you place ten pounds on that, that is a thirty quid return, uh, and then you can get another thirty quid to spare to play with in free bets. So a very good offer. Um, thanks very much for Eight 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 Sports uh, for sponsoring this video. It is much appreciated, and it is hugely helpful. And thanks to you guys for providing me the audience, um, you know, which allows people like Eight 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 to come after me and want to sponsor videos. It's a huge, huge thing. And yeah, I, as I said, links are in my description. If you are 18 plus and you're in the, uh, the UK, uh, then please do get on it. Uh, anyway, back to the matter at hand. Liverpool, 
uh, versus West Ham United. Um, they have made significant moves in this transfer market. I've got the moves in front of me. Felipe Anderson from Lazio, the winger. Um, I don't personally rate this guy very much. I saw him a few times in Serie A last season and wasn't too impressed. He, he wasn't the, the one kid that we saw uh, come on the block a few years ago. Issa Diop looks to be their best signing from Toulouse, uh, the big centre-back for £22.5 million. They signed Yarmolenko, uh, the Ukrainian winger. I remember being linked with Konop Lianko a few years ago. Those two used to kind of always come as a pair. They signed him. He's 28 now, uh, 18 million from Dortmund. Again, I'm not sure on that one. Fabianski seems a good signing for them, a good safe pair of hands in goal. I enjoyed his performances last season at Swansea. They've got Lucas Perez for four million from from Arsenal. I think that's a pretty risk-free deal. He, he scored a few goals when he was given opportunities at the Emirates. Those opportunities were just few and far between. Um, and then Jack Wilshere on the free. Uh, there's Ryan Fredericks. There's Fabian Balbuena. There's Carlos Sanchez, who signed literally a couple of hours ago. Um, so yeah, they've been busy. Um, it's hard to predict what their starting lineup is going to be. Football London think it's going to be Fabianski, uh, Fredericks at fullback rather than Zabaleta, Diop and uh, Declan Rice uh, as centre backs, and Masuaku. So Diop and Rice, the inexperience of Rice and the new signing of Diop, uh, is, you know, is, are they going to be able to deal with um, our electric uh, front line, especially Masuaku playing left back? If if that is indeed the case. Um, you know, has he got the discipline defensively? Um, the evening standard think is going to be Cresswell. Uh, they think Obonna uh, is going to play as well. So we'll have to see there. Um, midfield, you'd expect Mark Noble to play, but Football London is saying Obiang with Wilshire. Um, I'd expect them to pack out that midfield with with at least you know Noble, Wilshire, and Obiang perhaps. And then the front three um, with with uh, two wide men probably making it a midfield five at times, whether that's Anderson and Yarmolenko uh, or Mikel Antonio plays. I don't know. Uh, you'd expect Arnautovic to play up front, probably on his own. Football London have got Hernandez playing with him in a 4-4-2. But for me, yeah, I think they're going to play one up top, Arnautovic, a player I really, 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 really like. Um, and if it is indeed Joe Gomez alongside Van Dijk Gomez in that somewhat unfamiliar position at centre-back, um, then they might just want to hoof it long uh, towards Arnautovic, who has got a bit of presence about him. But, you know, Gomez... Likewise, he's a big lad. He maybe might mop those balls up all day, but they're not going to uh, beat us in midfield. They're not going to um, have more pace than us, even in those wide areas with uh, Yarmolenko and Anderson, because you know if we play Trent and Robertson, then those guys are equally quick. Um, so yeah, interesting to see what areas of Liverpool they target. For me, Gomez is the only guy that you'd be slightly wary of, not because I've got any doubts about him. And, I mean, the guy literally pocketed Neymar at Wembley. Um, he's capable of, of, of great things, but, you know, he hasn't really proven himself as a centre-back at Liverpool just yet, but he has got Van Dijk alongside him um, for talking through the game, which will be absolutely key if we're going to see off West Ham. In terms of our lineup, there are less question marks, especially with Fabinho picking up a knock. Um, that obviously doesn't come with great timing, given Henderson uh, has only just come back uh, from the World Cup, so you know, could we see Gini Van Alden play that number six role? I'll have no qualms with it. Um, he played it in against, against Napoli. Uh, he played it against Man City in the Champions League. So he's obviously, uh, you know, he can, he's adaptable and he can play that role. It would be a shame though, given how well he did uh, in the number eight position against Torino. He looked like he was making some forward runs. He had the license to do so with Fabinho kind of sitting in behind him and cater his work rate as well uh, being there. So it would be a shame to see Gini restricted as number six. But you know, you still want Naby Keita and James Milner there, the probable. Um, midfield trio there being made up. So for me, it's Allison. Uh, I think Alexander Arnold will play. Um, the evening standard are going with Klein, but you know, I, I guess I could be swayed either way. But I'm going for Trent Gomez, Van Dyke, Robertson, Milner, Van Alden, Cater, and then Mane, Salah, and Firmino. Daniel Sturridge might feel hard done by not getting a start, given that he scored in virtually every game he's played in this preseason. Um, and Firmino has only just come back, but you know you've got to go as strong as you possibly can. And I think Firmino looks sharp enough to at least get an hour or 65, 70 minutes uh, under his belt here and then push on for the rest of the season. Um, same with Alexander-Arnold. I think I'm happy to start those guys. Jordan Henderson and Dan Lovren obviously came back a little bit later, especially Lovren, so I think he's got no chance. Um, but yeah, that pretty much rounds off the first 11. And it, it's against the West Ham side, although a completely different West Ham side, than we've played in the last couple of seasons, but we have got a good record against them uh, in the last few games at least. They were a bit of a bogey side um, two or three years ago, especially towards the end of Rodgers' reign uh, and the start of Klopp's. But yeah, the last 
couple of times we've played them away from home, um, we've hit four past them with a 4-0 win, which helps secure top four in 16-17, and a 4-1 win uh, last season uh, when Mohamed Salah scored a couple of great goals and we, we started to riddle at the business. Played 4-4-2 that day. Uh, and there was a there was a 4-1 win at home as well uh, in that time, where during a time when we were just kind of scoring goals for fun. And I'm hoping it's going to be very similar. We've been doing it in pre-season, so yeah, I've got no reason to believe we cannot go out there and just play you know, the lovely football that we've been subjected to or enjoyed uh, over the past 18 months or so since Klopp's really got his hands on this team and we are playing the type of football that we have wanted to for years and we are looking to finally execute it and win trophies with that style because we don't want to be that team that is the best team to win nothing. And um, that has been the case for a few years now. This season has to be the one where trophies are... You know, I'll sat in the cabinet at the end of the campaign. If you look at our business compared to everyone else's, if you look at Spurs, have literally signed nobody. Uh, Man United have signed Fred uh, and the young uh, fullback from Porto and Lee Grant. Um, Chelsea have done a lot of business towards the end of the window. Um, Kovacic coming in. Uh, they've obviously broken the uh, goalkeeper record as well, so Alisson no longer has that burden on him. Um, so plenty of bits of bobs going on over there. Arsenal have done some bits and pieces, but not really done anything that's going to scare you. Um, and Man City have obviously added Mares, and they got Mendy back. Um, you know, you, you could you could declare some of their players like new signings. And Laporte, obviously, his first full season will you know be interesting to see who City even go with a centre back. Will it be Stones and Laporte? You know, that's what it was at the Community Shield. So yeah, all very interesting. And I suppose I should touch on Everton, who have signed about a billion players in the last few minutes. They've signed uh, Bernard, uh, Andre Gomez. Yeri Mina. I'm not sure whether the Kurt Zuma deal has been done in time. Probably something that, whilst I'm recording this, has been revealed. So I will check Twitter. I don't want to bore you, but yeah, probably they will get Kurt Zuma. Um, and yeah, other than that, uh, Fulham and Wolves done some nice business, you know, trying to disturb that top eight sort of thing. Leicester always there or thereabouts. It's a very exciting season, guys. Prediction for the season is we're going to win it. Um, that's my heart speaking, not my head. I'll let you decide for yourselves what my head's saying. Uh, my head is telling me for this game against West Ham United that we're going to win 2-1. Uh, Do you know, I'm not going to go mad and say we're going to be thrashed in 3-4-5. I'm going to pick a nice 2-1 win, um, just getting enough to get over the line. I want to get 12 points in these first four games so, so badly. That was Stannis in great stead going into that first international break. But there you go, guys. That is the preview. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below as to what you think the score will be and where you think we'll finish and your thoughts on the transfer window. Make sure to follow me on Instagram because I'm doing a giveaway over there. You just need to follow me, at Ben might say, like my latest post and tag three Liverpool fans for a chance to win any Liverpool shirt you want. Check out 888sport.com. Uh, iPhone and Android links are in my description if you're 18 plus. Uh, please gamble responsibly, of course. Uh, and make sure you subscribe to this channel for a West Ham vlog, which will be up after the game. And I'll see you next time.